In this video, I'm going to explain to you how the MS disease modifying therapies work, all of them, using simple language and easy to understand analogies. If you'd like to better understand how these meds work, stay tuned, because I'll start explaining right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today's topic, disease-modifying therapies. The medicines that we use to slow or delay multiple sclerosis. In 2019, there are literally 17 different FDA formulations of these medicines. And they're weird in the way that they work, because what we're trying to do is alter the immune response, which is no easy task. It's very easy to get lost in how these medicines work. And over the years, I've come up with ways of trying to help people understand what the medicine they take does. I've made several videos on this channel on each one of these drugs, but I thought I would take a few moments and pull them all together to give you the highlights of how these meds work using simple, easy to understand analogies and everyday language. So let's jump in. Number one, Copaxone, Glutyramor acetate. These are injections. Uh, they're one of the first line medicines and they work by tricking the immune response. Copaxone is four amino acids in a random chain. These four amino acids look like a certain protein. Specifically, they look like myelin, the, the coating on the nerves that your naughty immune system is trying to attack. When you take Copaxone, you literally show your immune system its target. You say, hey, look, look at this. And then a couple days later, you re-inject. Hey, look at it again. And then a couple days later, hey, look at it again. And you literally keep shoving the target in the immune system's face. And over time, the immune system becomes bored. When the immune system later sees the real myelin, the real target in the brain, it says, yeah, I saw that yesterday. And what happens is, instead of launching a pro-inflammatory raw campaign to try to attack the myelin, it says, eh, I saw that, I'm not interested, and it moves away. Number two, interferon beta. There are multiple injectable medicines for MS, including trade names such as Rebif, Betaseron, Extavia, Avanex, Plegarty. These medicines work by tightening the blood-brain barrier. The naughty autoreactive cells that will attack you live in the bloodstream, and they cross the blood-brain barrier where they gain access to the brain and spinal cord. The interferon-class medicines try to create a better barrier. So I think of the analogy of the three little pigs. If the natural blood-brain barrier is the straw house in the three little pigs analogy, when you squirt interferon on top of it, it becomes the stick house. It's a better house, so the cells can't cross as easily. Number three, Abagio or teraflutamide. This medicine for MS is a daily pill and it works differently than the interferons or Copaxone. It works by preventing the cell's ability to rapidly reproduce. When you have a white blood cell, it lives its life and as long as it doesn't have much to do, it'll just plot along and then make a copy of itself before it dies. And then that next cell will make a copy of itself before it dies. And that way you can maintain the white blood cells, which aren't really doing much. But if there's suddenly a, a war or a battle that's about to be fought, or your immune system gets activated, that one white blood cell sort of turns on and it'll make a bunch, a bunch of copies. Which reminds me of the Clone Wars, if you're familiar with the story of Star Wars, where they make a bunch of stormtroopers. Now when you take a Baggio, it doesn't kill the cells, but it freezes the cells so that they can't make multiple copies. You can still maintain the cell lines. It doesn't kill them. It just prevents them from rapidly reproducing so you can build a bunch of stormtroopers to go attack your brain. When you stop a Baggio, that circuitry is no longer interrupted and now your cells can start to behave more normally. Number four, dimethyl fumarate or Tecfidera. This twice a day pill is rather unique in its mechanism. It works by tricking the cells into thinking that they're under oxidative stress, even though they're not. That forces the cells to then respond with an antioxidant cascade, which slows down multiple sclerosis, a rather unique mechanism of action. Number five, fingolimod or gelinia, a once-a-day pill for MS that again has a rather unique mechanism of action. Now to understand this, I'd like to set up a brief analogy. Think of the white blood cell as a car, the bloodstream as a road, and the lymph node as a garage. 
car drives down the road, enters in the garage. Now getting in the garage is free, you just go in. But leaving the garage requires a hang tag. You have to show your hang tag to exit the garage. When you take Gerenia, it causes us to lose the hang tag. So the car goes down the road and drives into the garage, no big deal. But it can't get out because it doesn't have a hang tag. As long as you take Gerenia, when the white blood cells in the bloodstream and it goes into the lymph nodes, it becomes trapped. It reminds me of that old song from the Eagles, Hotel California. You can go in anytime you want, but you can never leave. As long as you continue to take Gerenia, those cells are sequestered or trapped in the lymph nodes. They can't leave. When you stop Gerenia, then the cell can re-express its exit hang tag, and you can once again leave the lymphatics. And that's how Gerenia works to slow MS, because if the cells can't enter in the bloodstream, they can't cross the blood-brain barrier into the brain. So keeping them trapped in the lymph nodes accomplishes that in a rather unique way. Number six, Tysabri, or natalizumab. It's an infused agent taken once every month. And it works to tighten up the blood-brain barrier in a way that we haven't seen before. Remember when I used the analogy of the three little pigs and I said that the normal blood-brain barrier is like the straw house. When you squirt interferon beta on that, it becomes the stick house. When you give someone Tysabri, it becomes the brick house. And then of course you have to say, she's a brick house. Tysabri creates literally the Great Wall of China. And so that blood-brain barrier is impermeable, and literally cells cannot cross. As long as you stay on Tysabri, that Great Wall of China stays intact. When you stop Tysabri, the Great Wall goes back to being a straw house. Number seven, Ocrelizumab, or Ocrevus. It's an infused drug taken through the vein, given twice a year, so every six months. And it works in a rather creative way. It kills adult B cells. Now, allow me to explain. Think about high school. I remember in high school, if two young men bumped into each other in the hallway, there was only one way to settle that dispute. They met behind B building at 3.30 and they beat the crap out of each other. Now, I noticed when I would attend some of these events that young men never showed up to fight by themselves. They always came with six of their very closest friends. And those friends would egg them on. Go ahead, whoop his butt, I got you, I'll hold your book bag. Now, using this analogy, the T cell is the cell that's going to attack your brain and spinal cord. But the T cell can't do it without stimulation from his friends, the B cells. With Ocrevus, we literally murder all of your friends. And so there are no adult B cells, therefore they can't get that T cell riled up to fight. And in the absence of adequate co-stimulation from the B cells, that T cell doesn't attack. And so why do we give Ocrevus every six months? Because six months later, you start to make more B cells. You start to make more friends. So then we murder those guys too. And every six months, we knock out adult B cells, which prevents the T cell from becoming adequately stimulated, which prevents it from attacking you. And lastly, alemtuzumab or Limtrata. It's also a monoclonal antibody infused uh, through IV in the vein. And as you recall, it's taken for five days in a row, and then you wait a year, and then three days, and then you don't take it again unless you have new disease activity. Obviously, this drug works very differently, and it's a style of induction therapy. Essentially, what you're doing is you target adult B and T cells, and you murder them, and then you force the young ones to grow back more well-behaved. I like to think of it as a reboot of the immune response. So instead of trying to block a cell, you're retraining the cell lines to knock it off so they don't behave the way they used to. There you have it. My rendition of how the MS medicines work using easy to understand analogies and straightforward language. My name is Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me today. If you enjoyed this video and think you'd like to see future content similar to this, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. And as always, Please leave your thoughts, comments, opinions, and questions down in the section below. I love to read them and I try to respond to all of them. Until my next video, and take care.